You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's WWE NXT After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's WWE NXT After Show. I came in like a wrecking ball. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, didn't expect so it to be that perfect. Thank you. Welcome to the AfterBuzz TV for this week's episode of NXT. Um, we'll, we'll reveal why we chose Wrecking Ball for today's song. But what, what for one, it's my jam. Yeah, no. Cheers to the Gregory Brothers. I freaking love bluegrass. And this, yeah. I mean, this song in bluegrass actually is pretty good. Welcome to After Buzz After Hours. I am the internet's soapbox mark, and joining me this week, as always, is the the professional wrestling world's true hobo. The wrestling's hobo. That's the, what yeah. I am. Sadly, we are sans Kathy this week. Mm-hmm. I know you guys are definitely going to miss her, as will we, but we must carry on. It is for the best. Sorry, I'm just jamming out. It's oh, so beautiful. Yeah, it's really this, uh, good. This is what proves that Miley Cyrus is a good songwriter, or whoever wrote <laughs> or it for whoever her. The f- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we're fine. So, we're good still. <laughs> uh, so we uh, we get started with the number one contendership match, uh, Bailey versus Summer. And set up last week. Yeah, set up last week, and uh, we hear a familiar voice that we have not heard on commentary. Jason Albert returns to NXT commentary. The big man. Yeah. The, the ball of excitement and energy that is the giant Jason Albert. Yeah, and there was no uh, no bubbles this week. No bubbles. He but was still. He loved the wacky, f- waving, inflatable arm flailing tube man. I guess they're cheaper. I guess they're cheaper than bubbles. That seems really hard to believe. I guess I just bought them. <laughs> Although yeah. with cutting costs, you think they would not have those. Instead, but. Of, instead of having to rebuy bubbles, they just buy two wacky, waving, inflatable arm flailing tube men. Or the bu- I think a gallon of bubbles is fairly inexpensive. I'm just I'm You gotta just get good saying. bubbles, dude. Way guess. too much. Um, Giant bubbles. Uh, this was a very good match. As as is expected, we haven't seen uh like we haven't seen Summer in NXT in a while and not have this quality of a match in a while. So it was a singles competition, like a, like a really high, hotly contested singles competition. This is for the number one contendership. The, the winner of this is going on to face Charlotte for the title. So obviously these two are definitely going to pull out all the stops in order to try and get the win. And it seems like they did. We, uh, we got a lot of interesting offense from Summer. Um, we got more very impressive arm drags from from Bailey. She's always got such interesting offense. You can never quite as a as an opponent, you can never quite pig her. She's always gonna do something that'll that'll just outsmart you. You really don't have any choice about it. It really takes you out of your element. Like Absolutely. when she tried doing the uh, the amateur style rolling around on uh, Summer's back <laughs> on several occasions, which was just all of the silly. And it was just and she did it sort of slow so, and it was like, oh come on, that that is oh as a as the person on the underside of that equation, you just get so angry. <laughs> Stop doing that! Get off of me! It was very much. Uh, it was pure Bailey at it that. Was. If if I may uh, slip back into my Michael Cole, vintage Bailey. Oh, Jesus had to do it. Um, but just before or just before everything seems to be going in Bailey's favor, Summer starts coming back. Um, a lot of hair pulling. She did an interesting like hair pull. Uh, stepping down on Bailey's shoulders, pulling back, yanking yeah, back sort of work, thing. Yeah, working the, the neck and the shoulder mm-hmm. area. And the, uh, this whole thing started, this shift in momentum started when Summers gave this bicycle kick mm. to, to Bailey. She was coming in the ropes, never saw it coming, just completely took over from there. All the impact on the world. Yeah, and it, it was some really good... Uh, uh, back and forth as per usual she yeah. tried going for another back scissor kick and bailey caught her swept her and uh <laughs> we've yes. got 
<laughs> started going to town. We got a Bailey's gonna hug you chant, which, perfect. Absolutely. That's what I like. I don't like the so-and-so's gonna kill you chants, because they never make good on that. Nobody's ever gonna die in the wrestling ring. All right, maybe that's not 100% correct. Okay, that's correct. not okay. Sometimes people will die, but generally it's not on purpose. No. But uh, yes, Bailey will hug you. We'll hug you and then hug you into the ground. Hopefully, as much as best friends go... That will right. convert you. It must be tough being her best friend. She'll just hug you and hug you and hug you until your eyes are bugging out of their sockets. Just exploding. Exploding. Um, Summer ends up getting the win with the Summer Crush. Summer Crush. Which is a wonderful, wonderful name. <laughs> uh, but that was the... Uh, Brought to you by Orange Crush? Hopefully. Oh, yes. I mean, SummerSlam's coming up. Just saying. <laughs> Sponsor. Actually, um, she, she's got to have a featured spot on SummerSlam. Summer Slam. I would hope so. Come on. I would hope so. Uh, but uh, I mean, I mean, uh, watch SmackDown. Never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> things happen. Uh, I know because I was there. I don't. What? Uh, Where, so were, they? Where the, were you? You got a time machine or some sort of teleportation device? Got a TARDIS powered by gnomes. Gnomes. <laughs> the Summer Crush was uh, uh, something the Big Show used to do. Used to, it was called the the uh, the big end, not the Did big really? end. I remember he used to throw the elbow the, over. Uh, no, he used to do leg drop too. Is it? Yeah, it's a big ass leg. Mm -hmm. uh, and Summer is our new number one contender for the NXT Women's Championship. Yeah, I mean, I have mixed feelings about this. Uh, obviously, Summer Summer is more liked than Charlotte at this point in time. But Summer just, she pulled out all, there, there was no rule that she followed. She was just, she fought as dirty as anything. So now we're put into the situation of you've got like two evils going against one each other. Granted, one of them is less evil, so mm -hmm. to speak, than another. But neither of them is, is going to be like a, a clean cut competitor, which is generally what you like to see. You like to see the clean cut competitor with a guy who's breaking all the rules and who's going to you know, be as dirty as he needs to be in order to get the win. Now you just got two people who are arguably going to pull hair and disregard rules. I mean, I mean it, might, it, it may end up just being like a fist fight at that point, and sure, that can be fun. Uh, but other than that, if it's a regular match, I can't see Summer suddenly changing and following all the rules against Charlotte. No, and Summer seems to be the first person to really breaking the mold with NXT. Anybody who's gone up to the main roster, whether they were originally on the main roster and then came down NXT for a small thing, or if they came from NXT and then their character evolved, everybody has kind of stuck to what they were no matter what program they were on, except for Summer. Because right now, she's arguably a face. Well, no, she's a face on, yeah. on a standard WWE TV. Right. But here in NXT, th this is the only place where she's really kind of in the middle. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's hard to get the big reactions if you're in between. Mm -hmm. you got to be sort of one thing or another thing to get the full reaction. Uh, so I don't know quite what the reaction is going to be at the title match. I think I, I, I have a prediction for how, how it'll go. I think uh, Summer's going to lose because whenever the title match is, they didn't, they didn't say if it was for a standard event or the next time they do their, their special event. So that would be a little too far. So if it's, we're just if it's anything like they do it, the number one contendership for the NXT championship, then it could be whenever. Mm, that's true. Um, I think Summer will lose, which will make Sasha turn, and then we will need more heel females, heel males uh, on NXT. No, don't. Yeah, I won't do that. That was a bad one. <laughs> uh, just because the BFFs right now are really the only uh, heels yeah, in NXT. Uh, no, I mean, NXT. they're also... There's not a whole lot of females to go around right now. So basically, any new female would be interesting. Alexa Bliss is the only new face we've seen. And Yeah. Ho it. Hopefully we see some more. Well, I mean, Becky Lynch, too, more recently. Uh, Becky Lynch, granted, bo okay, both of them are, are faces, so now we're a little bit on the, the heavy side of the, the good guy angle. So, I mean... It'll be interesting to see how this pans out. Right. We take a look backstage, and we see Neville and Sammy shortly after the events of last week where uh, Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel attack them at the end of the match. And uh, they're, they, they both seem just really disappointed that Gabriel decided to make that finally make that decision, that turn, to just do whatever he could to win. So it was uh, surprisingly easy to brainwash. Uh, I, I can <laughs> see that, but... 
words, strong words can have a strong effect on somebody, and I think the words of Tyson Kidd on Gabriel definitely got him thinking. Very much so. Uh, um, and then we go right to Justin Gabriel and Tyson Kidd, and Gabriel explains, I just decided to make a choice not to be a loser. And honestly, that's that's it. Because being a loser in this case for them is equal to death. Mm -hmm. Being a loser is dying, because being a loser means you're going to get fired. It's the same idea that we were expressing last week about the old lion and the new lion. Mm -hmm. you got the guys who are established, but they're not necessarily going anywhere. If they lose, they're done. But if they manage to hold that spot and keep off the young guys, they can stay on top for just that little bit longer. And so it's, it's a really important thing for them to get the win in their minds. Mm -hmm. So they're going to do whatever it takes. It does not matter to them because this is life or death. And it could show a little bit more edge to get them to be elevated a little bit more. Uh, he also said that they are not on my level and don't have my look. Which are both, those are both things that somebody, somebody who's established says when younger talent's coming in. I, I deserve this spot because nobody else looks like me. Nobody has the talent that I has. Nobody has the whatever I'm doing. I'm special. I'm unique. They're not whatever they are, you know? So it's it, but it's it, very defensive. Right. But, and, and honestly, it's not true a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. but a lot of the times it's a lie that somebody's trying to tell themselves to make themselves feel important. Yeah, make, them, make themselves feel a little bit bigger than they are. Uh, we find out possibly the most important news of the night. Tyler Breeze has entered the building. Yep. Thank goodness. Well, that's good. <sighs> All right. Now, now that we've talked about that, um, we get Sin Cara seemingly returning or just making an appearance on... An, appearing. Yeah, appearing. Reappearing. Uh, just trying to reestablish himself against Wesley Blake, which I don't know if we've seen before or not. I think we have. Some, well, something tells me we have. We might have seen him in like a, one of the enhancement tag teams. Sometimes, yeah. Maybe. Um, pretty good match. I mean, yeah. ever, ever since the, the whole Hunakara thing happened, Sin Cara's been back on, back on his game. Yeah. I mean, Hunico's always been an excellent performer, so it, it's wonderful to see. Hopefully, we get a resurgence of Sin Cara. I would really like him. I would really like him to be back in the uh, in the limelight. As a but, single, uh, as a singles competitor, still very unique. Mm -hmm. But whatever he does is different than a lot of the other guys you see. It's high flying, but at the same time, so a lot of the high flying guys they can all sort of do the same thing. But whatever he does, it's different in some way, different. And I, I think that's really appreciated. I like the way you put that. Uh, yeah. As a singles competitor, we'll get to that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, he pulled off a lovely suicide dive, took a little jog, um, <laughs> and then Wesley just totally cold cocked him, just, but just right in the face. Sin Cara was completely outsmarting Blake. Everything he was doing was so fast and worked so well that by the time Blake could finally manage a little bit of space, it was just like, screw you, buddy! Yeah, it was mean. Uh, and then slapped a quick arm breaker on him and then gave his just left kept, arm a rear lock. Just working it, just, just trying to snap it off. Yeah. The, uh, of course, I would have gone for the leg. For a jumping guy, you go for the leg. You try to keep him on the ground. Yeah. Arm, not so much. He doesn't really need those. Obviously, a, a amateur mistake. Hopefully, one Wes Wesley will take. You live, you learn, team. you go on. Yeah. Uh, beautiful springboard uh, headbutt, which then led to a springboard crossbody. You're saying maybe he didn't get the height that he wanted for a crossbody, and they said, hey, let's just do it again. All I'm saying is they were two distinctly different moves. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it was he, he intended to go originally for a crossbody that turned into a headbutt, it doesn't matter because they were both different, and the first one didn't look like a screw up at all. No, no, and it still it still looked pretty dang pretty. Yep. Uh, and then we get a uh, the the common Sin Cara corner kick, leading to what they were calling a high angle senton. We know what that we know what that is. It's a senton bomb, but and it, it but it is also a high angle senton. But they just don't have a name for that yet. Like Sin Cara has gone through a lot of Sin Cara has been one of those uh, people and one of those characters where he doesn't have a finisher. Which right. I like because that keeps you on your toes to where oh that oh that one this time, uh, so see like he's been doing the the senton bomb a little bit more recently yeah but I I hope that they they do a little bit more of that any move can win not just like oh finisher oh that didn't work so he's gonna do it I again mean, that's that's fine but they need to name it they do you gotta yeah. have a name for everything something in Spanish it's not that hard. 
Yes. Um, speaking of Spanish, they were chanting Lucha, Lucha throughout the match. So I found it interesting you said, as a singles competitor. As a singles competitor. Because there is a rumor going around that Sin Cara might be replacing El Ocal in the uh, currently unnamed Lucha Libre tag team with Callisto. I'm not a, not a big fan of that. I like Locale. I, I, really, I really like him. You don't get to see him very often. and you, You've gotten to see a lot of, a lot of Sin Cara. So give somebody else a chance. Give somebody like Locale a chance. I don't know. And that's, I think, just, that's just me. Well, I also think their two styles and their two looks. You know, right. They looked, they're, they're stylistically very similar, and, and they work together well as a tag team. But then you put Sin Cara with Callisto, and you've got two very similar styles. Callisto's a little bit more... I would say he outshines Sin Cara a little bit more. No, yes, he would. Um, so having the two of them together could lead to some like amazing double team stuff, some ama really amazing lucha wrestling. Yeah, that's a weird thing to say. I can't believe I just did that. Hey, <laughs> lucha wrestling. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ATM machine. Uh, I'm not the smart tonight. <laughs> um, uh, but it, it'll be interesting to see whether that rumor comes to fruition or not. Right. I mean, like you said, they're very similar in style and uh, and uh, appearance for the most part. I liked Locale because he was sort of the bruiser of the two. He's a little taller than me, and he's got more weight on him than me. So I, I liked him as, as sort of the strong man but still can fly. So I liked him for that. Now we've got sort of the same note in a tag team. I, I like the diversity, especially working with a team like Ascension. you got a guy who's sort of well-rounded but not the strong man, and then you got the bruiser. Just a straight-up powerhouse. So you got that in a lucha team. I like that dynamic. No, it's a, it's a different dynamic, and it, it, it makes them stand out a little bit more. Right. You see that you see that big dude coming because he's taller than a standard luchador. Absolutely. It's hard to fly when you're a big man. Your center of gravity is higher, and it takes more work to, to, to work your body. So. Yeah. It, 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 I hope that uh, we, either way, we see whether that rumor is true or not. Well, just wait and find out. Exactly. Yep. Uh, speak, speaking of waiting, we've been waiting to hear what Natalia has to say to her husband, Tyson Kidd, about the interview that he had last week. The no limit interview, no question off limits, but hey, you're, you seem to be blaming me for your loss. It's like, no, no. I like how he said it was blindsided by it. You sent up the interview, you <laughs> exactly. goofball! Uh, yeah, no. Uh, this, uh, this story is on kind of a different level than anything that we've really seen in NXT or kind of recently on all WWE TV. Okay, in wrestling you have a lot of relationships and a lot of drama that's based on relationships, but uh, nowhere in, in recent history have, have you seen the drama look and feel so real. This, this has a very real feel to it. When you're watching these two, they, they really seem to have a disconnect. They're playing it. Uh, if, if they're playing it, they're playing it so close to the fest, it's brilliant. It just keeps you absolutely engaged. And Natty said, "Your attitude is awful, and I don't think I want to be involved in it." So, oh, so you don't want to you want to come out with me to my match? No, I mean that's I mean that's fine. If there's stuff back here you want to do that you're a little bit more interested in, and it's just like, oh my, uh. It was it was one of those moments of oh, either you're with me or you're not with yeah, me at all. Yeah, no, it's like, well, Whoa. I'm gonna go to the Whoa. ring. You should decide whether you want to stay or go with me. And it's, and it's, like the and the undertone of that, which everybody knows, is like, so is this relationship over? Whoa, whoa! Yeah, it was. <laughs> this is getting really serious. It's just really, it's just messed up. <laughs> it's they're it's, playing with our emotions. They really are. They're taking what was kind of started, what we know about them as TJ and Natalia from Total Divas, and bringing it to Tyson. And Natalia, because he's he's not TJ on TV. He's no. Tyson Kidd. Right. So there's that disconnect, but they're the exact same people. So like, it's what side of the fourth wall are we on? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, honestly amazing. That's, it's that pretty is, amazing. This is basically how you use Total Divas to your advantage. That basically this right here. Mm -hmm. You have the disconnect, and then you bring it into the ring. You make the whole thing come together. They That's what they're doing it the right way. I don't know if somebody's telling them to do this or if they figured it out on their own, but this is how you use that platform to, to excel at the wrestling part of it. Because we don't watch Total Divas. We no. don't. Eh, exactly. Whatever. Just eh, whatever. Yeah. But the the drama here is making you think, 
Well, what happens on Donald Davis? Right. <laughs> like, now I'm actually starting to maybe go, well, if I, I kind of want to see. Well, I mean, that's the thing is they're advertising Total Divas. Uh, they took Legends House spot. They're re-airing the first season on the WWE Network, only nine ninety nine a month. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so now it's kind of like, oh, when does it? <laughs> we should watch and see if that's right. the thing. If if this is just a a back ended advertisement for the re-airing of season one, it's genius. It's brilliant. It is brilliant. They're selling me. I, I'm not. A, I don't like reality television. I just like wrestling. Uh, but they're selling me. They're doing it. That's a great sentence. Yeah. Uh, after this, we the see original reality television. Yeah. Professional wrestling. Uh, after this, backstage, we see Summer and Sasha doing their makeup in in the, in the mirror. <laughs> Um, and Sasha seems a little bit a little bit bitter about Summer winning, but uh, I liked Summer's line of uh, "When I win, you'll want to be friends again." So, yeah, and it's it's really like uh, there's there's the now that the BFFs are over with. Your lipstick looks great, by the way. I know it's <laughs> it's uh, uh, that's an, the whole BFFs storyline. I mean, are the BFFs coming back? Like OG BFFs? Is, that's what I was like. Are they like teasing that? Could that be a possibility? Sasha just seems like the woman in the middle. Like kind of. She originally was like all about Charlotte, and then when Charlotte started being mean to Summer, it's like, oh crap, what do I do? Sort of a thing. And uh, hope, and uh, that's why I hope that uh, we get Sa <laughs> we get Sasha. Sorry, going through puberty. Um, we see uh, Sasha. <laughs> Turn uh, turn face soon. Uh, we see CJ Parker come out to the ring in full gear, so thinking it's a match, but no, he comes out says, last week I said things that I'm not proud of. And uh, Xavier Woods, if you're back there, I, I would like to apologize. Face to face, man to man. Xavier Woods comes out in a beautiful suit. Looking sharp. Well tailored. Yes, sir. Uh, he apologizes and, and he just... I'm I'm sorry it was my return. I was, I was just like really up on adrenaline. Um... And Z Woods responds very thing. You just you you mentioned it. I'm getting my PhD soon, which shows I'm not an idiot. I don't. You sound like a child. Yeah. So, and and I, mean, he, I think he he sort of the just the the feeling he gave was I'm a smart man, but I'm not just a smart man. You don't mess with me, or I'm gonna snatch that. What did he call it? it the, the rainbow the, 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 bird's the, nest on the back I, of your head. Yep. It does. It is looking pretty though. It is looking good. His his uh, dreads. I like him. I like him back more than they were loose. Oh, because it makes him look like more of a jerk. <laughs> uh, and I it totally I works. I can imagine it just smells. Have you ever smelled a white guy with dreads? It smells worse than me. Yards away. Yeah, right. Worse yes. than all of Venice Beach. If you, I mean, if any of y'all got dreads, no offense to you, but I'm just glad you're on this side of the camera. Just hope Let's you just put Febreze your head. That's all we're saying. <laughs> just Febreze your head. Uh, as sort of a last-ditch effort, CJ goes, I want to offer peace, and I suggest that you accept it. And he, and he throws the peace, and then Zave goes right up in his face and out. Almost an eye poke, like peace. like centimeters away from an eye poke. Wait, do that again? Yeah. Uh, go, uh, team go Team Venture. <laughs> yeah. As uh, Xavier Woods is leaving the ring, CJ kicks him? He kicks him. Yeah, okay, he kicks him in the he back of the kicks head. Him. Uh, the crowd chanting air kick for some reason. Or hair kick. Or hair kick, maybe. Either Whatever. or. Uh, and uh, we, CJ walks off. He's like, I'm not going to hit him. I, got, I said my piece. Uh, and looks like this will be elevating a little bit more, escalating a little bit more, a little bit faster. Yeah. Now that some violence has occurred. Oh, it's, it's sort of weird. I would expect, I would either expect Woods to accept, because Woods is a, a man of compromise, being of intelligence. And then CJ so, kick him. Right, anyway. anyway. Yeah, so it's, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's one way to do it. That's fine. Uh, it just sort of gives, it gives the CJ Parker a little more credence to his, to his anger. Yeah. Because like, if, if he did get angry, peace. Yeah. Then why would he kick him? Right. If that's his whole thing. Now down the stuff. road, do you think after this angle's over, that like maybe Parks and Woods could be uh, CJ Parker and Woods could be a tag team? I don't. Although saying their last names together just gives you an outdoor feel. Right. Parker and Woods. Parker and Woods. Woods Parker. Wood Parker. Uh, no, because then either CJ Parker would have to turn face, or Xavier Woods would have to. Woods turn would face. go heel. At this point, he's absolutely. No benefit to being a good guy any longer. I mean, after at least right now. I mean, they complete. 
he, it, he came uh, just the whole the whole way Woods has been going right now is just, it's just starting to fizzle out. He came in, he uh, he went up to the main roster, you know, he got he beat Brutus Clay, got his music, got the got the girls. Now he has none of that. Uh, he's so, just kind of with he's just with R Truth every now and again right. as a tag team. Honestly, it, it it only benefits him to just start to change the course. I agree. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll see how this develops. Yep. Uh, we see a wonderful, when we come back from commercial, we see the villains trying to come through a door and don't work because they both try at the same time. Classic gag. <laughs> and they're just they're just talking about getting the titles. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Ha-ha. 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 And that's about it. That was essentially it. If you didn't watch it, you don't have to because we just shortened it from like 30 seconds but to 10. It's super funny. Yeah. Just, it's just like, they're classic. <laughs> Um, which Literally. Went right, yeah, they are. Which went right into a package for the Ascension, who we haven't seen in a little while. So I don't think. Uh, I mean, people were complaining the Ascension was same old, same old. I think the absence of them is going to make people go when they come back. Oh wow, yeah, I remember this. This is good. Yeah, no, they they've been imp improving from uh, what we've seen. Absence makes a heart grow fonder, especially with guys who all they do is kick ass. Yeah, so I agree with that. Speaking of kicking ass, a uh, bull Dempsey. Oh yeah, big bull, ass kicker. Bull. Bull, 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 bull versus Angelo Dawkins, <laughs> uh, and there was we we got to see a little bit more of uh, Bull Dempsey. I I I've been a fan of his. You know, yeah. we, we we you talk to him on the Twitter a lot. Oh yeah, no, he's we we talk quite a bit. Very very good guy. Yes, and uh, just a very straightforward match. Angelo got a couple of shots in. We saw that beautiful rollover headlock that he does. It's, yeah, it's right. Just, it's just pretty. Just look at it. If if the guy tries to resist at all, his hail just twists right off his body. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> risk of decapitation. Yeah. Uh, we saw Dawkins try to go for a roll up, and uh, Dempsey just sat right down on him, and Whoa. very me much more aggressive than the uh, the hyper drive. Hyper drive. Yeah. Yeah. There were a couple things tonight that made me go, "Wow, they do it better than Mojo." Forget <laughs> you, Mojo. Ba mama. Bailey and Bo and Bull both do it better. <sighs> I um, feel bad for Mojo. Really I do, do too. Yeah, I, I totally do. He he needs uh, somebody better to watch his back. Yeah, or just I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah, we don't we don't we don't know how how he's working down there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Lord knows there's enough people with opinions on on Twitter and and YouTube and who watch this show. Go ahead and comment with what you think Mojo Rally should do, not just go away because that's not answering the problem. <laughs> Be I constructive, wanna, right? Constructive criticism. What do you want to see Mojo Rally do to actually change things up and get get momentum going forward and to sort of connect with you as a fan? Leave their comments down below. Please, or, leave or on below. iTunes, where you could also leave us a five star rating. Please That'd be do great. That. <laughs> it helps people uh, see that there are there are actually shows talking about NXT, and all, we have them for all of our wrestling shows. Download the AfterBuzz app as well. It's actually really it's really handy. Like we're not so, yeah. just saying that. You can keep all your favorite shows on one tab. It's it's real nice, uh, and you get an audio or a video option. Yes, it's it's real cool. Uh, Bull Dempsey. With a bulldozer for the win, looked better this time. It actually looked like a like a, a neck breaker. Uh, yeah, he, there was no stall to it. It was no. straight up and straight down. Like he didn't hold him. It just bam. That was it. And 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 it looked like he was aiming straight down onto the mat as opposed to just like oh, I was dropping my guts. Yeah. It it seemed a lot more. He looked more confident with it. I guess yeah. is what it was. I guess the first time he was sort of ginger. He's kind of like I don't I don't want to crush the dude. <laughs> but this time he was like, well, I I'm I'm confident I can not kill him, but but it, definitely it put like him out. It looked like something in a video game with just high impact, just bam, yeah, it's just straight down on your head, on your shoulders, and it uh it was solid. Yeah, he gets on the mic. Bull Dempsey is the wrecking ball. Boom! And that's why we did it. Your minds are blown! Instantly went, yeah, that's the song. Yep. Dang it. Ooh, Gregory Brothers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> backstage, we see Zayn with a microphone. That was different. Ladies and gentlemen, the NXT champion, Adrian Neville. And they, they just kind of have a friendly back and forth interview of, uh, uh, I think everybody wants to know why you came out and helped Zami Zayn. Well, you know, we've, we've been friends for a long time and I'll always have your back, no matter what. Uh, and they just toss the mic back to Devin. Yep. Let's go take care of business, and Devin actually made the catch. Good job. Yeah, no, like that. She had a very apropos reaction of just like, "What? I, <laughs> I have this is my job. Why is still my job?" <laughs> and she had to react quickly in heels to catch the microphone. Oh, <laughs> got it. Or if she's like Renee Young backstage. Did you ever see that rib? That. <laughs> 
Uh, Renee Young was in the back. Where Evolution just did a big like beat down spot on Shield before yeah. before the match. And just like Triple H, explain your actions and has the microphone out to him. Gives a little thing. Why aren't you wearing shoes? <laughs> <laughs> and the camera pans down, and she's not wearing shoes, which is a thing to make the dudes look bigger. You're always trying to make the other guys look taller. Yes. But Generally, it, when I'm getting interviewed, the guy interviewing me is not wearing shoes, or he's standing at a very weird split-legged thing to make me look a little taller. Which is much obliged. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, Dave's not 5'5". Five five. No. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> he's a tall man. Uh, but yeah, they, it was just kind of a, like, she looked really confused, just like... What are you doing, man? Sometimes a boss is just going to call you out on stuff, and you got to roll with it. Yeah, you it can't a, just go, let's take another take. No, man, you, you got to roll No, with it was live for, for the backstage right. pass, so it was, it was real funny. Um, and we get to our main event. Sami Zayn versus Adri and Adrian Neville versus Justin Gabriel and Tyson Kidd with Natty in tow. Right. Natty decided to come down. We get some Natty chants from the audience. She wants to support her husband. Like like any good spouse wants to do, you want to support your spouse. You may not always agree do. with everything, right. but you want to know that you're there for them. Right, exactly. You want them to know you're there for yep. them. Uh, a lot of quick tags from Zane, Zane and Neville on the beginning. Uh, Completely overtaking Kidd. I mean, they, they were all over the place. Uh, we get... <laughs> This is. I'm just. I'm laughing because of how amazing this move was. Uh, uh, Sammy makes the tag to Neville, gets down on his uh, hands and knees. Like Neville, tabletop position. Yeah, tabletop. Like, eh. uh, I just. It's amazing. Neville gets on his back and does a uh, backflip 360 off of Zane. Yeah, corkscrew moonsault. Corkscrew off, moonsault off Zane and uh, lands <laughs> it, and everybody goes, "What the whoa!" <laughs> it was insane, dude. I can't get over it. Um, and then we start getting, uh, we go to commercial, we come back, and Gabriel's in control over Zane. And then that's when a lot of the aggression from the heel tag team starts. Uh, we see a lot of Tyson Kidd just beating the crap out of Zane in like, the corner. Like, not even, like, like pretty punches. They were just like, get, 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 just Designed short, for pain. short, and just, I mean, uh, angry, yeah, angry and, punches. And, and Gabriel was like, dude, like, I'm not, like, the ref was counting up to five. Gabriel's like, dude, I'm not holding him, yeah. and Natty seemed very concerned, like, what are you doing? There's just not a whole, it, I mean, Kid doesn't seem to have a whole lot of control, and it was like, what was it, last, or a couple weeks ago when he went to grab the chair, it's like he's lost control of himself. Yeah. He's just flying by the seat of his pants, it's blind rage in that ring. He just needs that W. Yeah. Um, we get a front and back kick. From from the chest in the back nice. of Sami Zayn, nice, solid. Uh, very hot tag, v very hot tag uh, to Adrian Neville. Real mean Yakuza kick. Hey, you know what? Because <laughs> it's just it's real low, and it's almost like your entire just forward momentum goes into your leg and into your opponent. Hey, just be happy he kicked him on the side instead of the front. If he kicked him in front, his head would have popped out the back of him. Hence right out Yakuza of his butt. kick. Right <laughs> out of his butt. Or just off of his neck. No, I'm thinking like straight oh, on. Like, straight. Oh, straight. Oh, I see. Yeah, inverted man right there. Oh, gross. Nothing but a skull popping out the other side. Uh, we get Justin Gabriel going for a hurricanrana. Neville, beautiful power bomb. Bam! Straight up and down. Almost as high as like an old school uh, sky high from D'Lo Brown. Yeah, it, it kind of had that feeling. Or when uh, um, Titus O'Neil used to do one on like uh, Yoshitatsu when he would oh, send him yeah. up real high and right back down. But he didn't sit down with it, did he? He did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They, they gave him the sky high for a little bit. And we and this is how I. This is what I think about Neville when I see him wrestle. He's this all around. He can he can do this incredible high flying stuff, but still hit the power moves like the real power moves. Just catch a power bomb out of nowhere and just send him down real quick. He can do it all. He may be a smaller guy, but he is he's built. It's no kidding. And to have the amazing center of gravity that he has, even though somebody says that they forgot about it. Um, <laughs> I, actually, I don't think I heard that line tonight, which makes me happy, because they they are just driving getting, it home, man. Just driving that horse a little too hard. A little bit too much. But um, kid breaks up the the pin and drags Gabriel back over to the corner. Just, just I think he kicked Gabriel. I really think he did. Just no matter what, just, just break it up. Just break up this pin, even if you have to kick the closest guy to you. Who is your partner? It might have been like a safety thing. It might have been Gabriel going like. Getting up, like trying to get his shoulder up, while Kid was in midair with the kick. Yeah, and just, just coming in, real took quick. him out, coming in hot, and then just dragging him. Just come on, keep, just tag me in. 
gets the tag and gets super kicked in the face. <laughs> Sometimes she gets super kicked in the face. Well, the whole crowd during this time though was uh, chanting for Sami Zayn. They wanted to see we want Sammy. Zayn come back in because he took the brunt of this punishment. They wanted to see him get get back on top. They wanted to see him start to beat them for beating him so bad. It's, it's, it, that is always going to be Zayn's appeal. He is always going to be one of those guys you want to see him hurt somebody because he's always taking punishment. Very much so. And the crowd gets what they wanted. There is a hidden tag when Kid w goes for a roll-up. And uh, Neville just r just goes and dives like a madman. Uh, he gives a suicide dive through the ropes. And uh, Zane hits a crossbody off the top rope. I should stop using my hands. Uh, <laughs> perfect for an audio podcast. Yes. Uh, uh, Zane gets a crossbody and then a suicide planche after he throws kid outside which was beautiful and just that type of dive that yeah. we've and kid grabbing that knee as soon as he threw him outside kid went straight for that left knee he's like ah, i think i tweaked it he gets back into the ring gets rolled back into the ring and is like the refs are checking the ref is checking on him and that he's checking, checking on him very much so and he uses the attention to try to go after zane who throws him back into Natty. Natty punch, no, punches him into her. Pun yeah, yes. Kid yes. tries to get up, throw a quick punch, Zane grabs it and just clobbers him, which sends him into his wife, launches her off of the ringside. She didn't hit bar the barricade, the though. Did she? No, she did not hit the barricade. But though. she landed funny on that yeah. shoulder, which she was grabbing at a little later. Yes, so uh, instant, just like, oh crap. Both Sammy and, and uh, uh, Tyson were just like, uh, you, you're gonna go? Um, Should I go? Uh, oh. hey. going, I'll go check on her. Well, no, they both kind of they both kind of got uh, out of the yeah. ring. Uh, kid, excuse me, kid comes back, rolls up Sami Zayn for the quick one, two, three. Dirty and dirty. Then, but then doesn't even have the wherewithal to roll on the side of the ring where his wife is. Just gets out of the ring. Just as totally far away. starts to celebrate. Yes, I did it. <laughs> yes, I did it. Uh, goes, your wife is still down. But he there's there's a moment where he goes. Oh crap! And then, and then he runs back. He's like, "Oh, are you okay, honey? I love you." And he's like, and you just see everybody just looks really uncomfortable. They're just like, "Did he really just do that? Does this this guy even Gabriel and Gaddy, Daddy and Gabriel were both just like, what the hell? Do you <laughs> think this are guy you? is seriously losing his mind?" And I got what I wanted because every, everybody's just kind of looking at him like, "What you sick you slimy?" Mother <laughs> Everybody. And the kid just gives one final big, I did it! <laughs> Such a quality human being, this so Tyson good. kid. Uh, and uh, uh, that wrapped up this week's episode. Very confused. Uh, this week's episode of NXT. We got uh, one more episode, I think, before of the four current four-week uh, loop. Uh, of NXTs before they record maybe? again, I, I think. I, I can't keep track. I think they already recorded their next... I hope they already recorded their next round. Um, I don't remember. So, I think it was a solid show. What do you think, so Yawning Hobo? I'm sorry, yeah. Hashtag yawn. <laughs> Hashtag yawning hobo. Hashtag hobopotamus. Uh, I really liked it. I really did. There wasn't anything that felt slow or out of place. Uh, I mean, the the cup, the, you know, Bull Dempsey kind of quick match. I don't want to call it a squash because, to Dawkins' credit, Dawkins stayed alive during that whole match. Got he, some good shots in he there. He really fought back as hard as he possibly could. Um, but I, mean, I, thought, I felt everything was, was well placed. It felt like a good show. We've usually been seeing four matches per show, and this time we got a lot of backstage and in-ring additional segments on top of four really solid matches. It was, it was a solid show. Absolutely. NXT continues to prove that you're the best show on WWE. Right. Really? If I mean, it, right now, WWE Network is having its free preview uh, until Monday. And if you don't have the WWE Network and you're watching this on Hulu or something, check out the WWE Network, WWE Network <laughs> so that you can watch uh, NXT TakeOver as well as the, uh, the first one. What was the first one? The first special... <laughs> arrival! Arrival. NXT Arrival. <laughs> Give me a minute, I'll get it. <laughs> you got it. NXT Arrival and NXT TakeOver, so you can see why these uh, these athletes are constantly improving their style this and is quality. impressing everybody. Absolutely. And I, proud to be doing the NXT show with you, Hobo. Thank you. Uh, and hopefully Kathy Kelly will be returning with us next week. Um, but, right, but for right now, for today, where can 
they find you, Hobo? I'm on the Twitter at True Hobo, Pro Wrestling Tees dot com slash Hobo. Pick up a swanky shirt, and I've got a whole lot of stuff going on. Let's see. Tomorrow, I'm wrestling in Las Vegas, Nevada for uh, Future Stars of Wrestling. Sunday is Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, filming in Port Wainimi. Uh Next Thursday, is I am roasting the Iron Sheik. Uh, that, that's ridiculous. 100% <laughs> real, not fake. No, I, I bet. Wow, I have no idea. Um, and then, then Friday, uh, the next Friday, I'm doing Championship Wrestling from Hollywood again. The Boys and Girls Club in Oxnard. I'm everywhere. You are everywhere. Uh, as, and right now, we we uh, haven't announced it on After Buzz TV, but we have come together as the Sega Powers. Sega. Oh, we can't touch hands. Oh, Remember? God. We're going to blow everything up. The world will explode. That was really close. It was. It was very close. Uh, if you want to hear more about why we're the Sega Powers, uh, you can go to YouTube.com slash SoapboxCarTV. Spit. And you can also uh, find me on Twitter at SoapboxMark, and we'll talk about wrestling and stuff. Also, uh, contact at Catherine Kelly and... Uh, Wish her well because she's not feeling too well. And you Go can follow, look at our photos. And you can follow all of us here at After Buzz TV. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the After Buzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.